There's so much to learn in JavaScript. Ah! Why yes, new developer, there is a lot to learn in JavaScript, but in this video, I'll break it down and tell you the five most important things you need to learn in JavaScript. JavaScript is like any other language or framework or anything that you learn in life, uh, playing a sport, playing an instrument, whatever it is, there obviously is a lot to learn. There's a lot of practice that it takes. There's a lot of just experience that it takes. It's iterations. And I talk about this in the boot camp that I teach. Uh, you have to go through iterations. You have to use stuff over and over again for it to really sink in. Uh, so a lot of people maybe do HTML, CSS, and they get to JavaScript and they're a little overwhelmed. And maybe you don't know exactly what you're supposed to know. So I'm going to break down the five most important things from my perspective of what you need to know in JavaScript. And keep in mind, by no means is this like an all encompassing list of every single thing you need, obviously, because it's just five, but this is not everything you need to learn in JavaScript. These are the topics that I believe are most important for me. So number one, the first thing that I want to mention is equality. And this is a specifically tricky thing in JavaScript because there uh, is a double equals and a triple equals syntax. Now with the double equals, it will compare values after it's done some automatic convert data conversion or data type conversion. For example, if I have a string with the number 32 inside of it, and I check to see if it is double equals to the number 32, those things will actually be true because it's going to convert them to uh, match each other's data type and then compare the value. However, a triple equals does not do that. It just does a value comparison and does not do any conversions. So that can be really tricky. The other part of this that's really interesting and really important is the way that primitives are compared for equality versus objects. Primitives are looking just at the actual value of the thing, a string, a number, so on and so on. But objects are not looking at the values inside of the objects, it's looking at that object in memory. Does this actually point to the same object in memory? And if that stuff doesn't make any sense to you right now, that's why this is number one on my list because it's very important in JavaScript, knowing how the double versus triple equals works and then knowing how primitives versus objects and basically everything arrays and classes and all those are objects. So understanding how those compare in terms of equality is really, really important. Now, number two on my list, and I've done a, an entire video on this, is asynchronous JS. How does JavaScript run and how do you interact with asynchronous JavaScript? Now, this started with uh, callbacks, and there's still a lot of callbacks, but you call a function, and then as a parameter, you pass a callback function. That function is what will get called when that thing finishes doing its work, I guess. So the callback function uh, was uh, kind of the original way that we would do asynchronous JavaScript. And then people started to look at it and they said, hey, this can get kind of ugly once you have callbacks inside of callbacks inside of callbacks and you have what's called callback hell. So then they went to promises and that enabled the dot then and dot catch. So a dot then would handle your successful response from a promise. A dot catch would handle the errors coming back from a promise. And then additionally, they added on async await syntax to match things that are available in, in languages like C Sharp. So what this allows you to do is kind of wait for the actual data to come back in line in your code. So you're not having to write a dot then dot catch, which is my favorite syntax. Again, if you want to learn more about the different ways that you can run asynchronous JavaScript, check out that video. But just know that everything or a lot of things that you'll do in JavaScript come from or are asynchronous. So you need to understand how asynchronous stuff works, when to handle a promise, when to do async await, all that kind of stuff to make sure that you really understand what is going on. All right, number three is error handling. And this is maybe a little advanced for people that are, uh, that are new to JavaScript, but I think this has several different implications. And error handling could mean a lot of different things. For example, if you define a function that accepts a what you assume is a string in JavaScript, there's no, nothing actually guaranteeing that someone's going to pass you a string, they could pass you a number. So then if you try to, to access the substring method on that thing on that parameter, it's not going to work because it's actually a type of number. So you have to prepare yourself for that you have to think about how can really how can people mess this up because there's really no structure in JavaScript, which is the bright side and the downside sometimes. But you have to kind of put yourself in that mindset of how can these things go wrong? And if so, how can I fix it? So checking the types of your parameters, checking that you actually have data there that they're not passing null and undefined or something like that. 
Another thing is getting into surrounding code that can throw errors with a try catch. And this is really the crux of this is you have to be able to handle those errors because if you don't, obviously it'll lead to problems, especially if you're running like a node application and one of the more recent feature or versions of node, it will shut down your server completely if you don't handle the error. So anything that can throw an error, you need to be able to handle that using a try catch. Again, also think about writing defensive code, preparing yourself for things that can go wrong and handling them nicely yourself so that your application doesn't crash. So error handling, super, super important, has some different implications. And a lot of it is just a mindset about how you think about the code that you write to make sure that you're protecting yourself against things that could go wrong. All right, next up is ES6 syntax. So ES6 or ES2005 was a really big version of JavaScript. There was lots of things that came in that new version of JavaScript. And because of that, that has really kind of been the delimiter for me at least of kind of like eh, regular older JavaScript versus newer JavaScript. And if you look at things like React, for example, or a lot of the tutorials that you'll see, you're going to see a lot of ES6 syntax inside of the JavaScript that you see or watch or read on a blog article. And if you aren't familiar with that, you can kind of become lost. So here's a couple of key features from ES6 uh, syntax that I mean. Destructuring is a big, big one. So if you wanted to grab a property off an object, you can do that right in line with a little code snippet and you can destructure multiple properties. You can destructure from arrays. This is used with the use state hook a lot in React, for example. Uh, so destructuring is really nice. Also the spread operator. The spread operator allows you to take all of the items in an array, for example, and spread them out. So you kind of get access to them individually. It's useful for passing uh, items in an array as parameters to a function. So you can spread out the items in the array and pass them as individual parameters to a function. It's useful for making copies of arrays. Uh, and it's not just for arrays, it's also for objects. So you can do the same exact idea but get out to the unique key value pairs and uh, copy an object, that sort of stuff, a basic object. So destructuring, spread operator, template literal strings, these are so handy. I almost I almost never use regular double quotes or single quotes. I almost always use backticks that allow us to do variable interpolation or string interpolation uh, with our data inside of that ES6 template literal string. So those are ones that I use all the time. Highly recommend you checking those out. All right, last up on this list is the array methods. And I started a series on these because of how important they are. Map, filter, reduce, sum, every sort. Those functions are incredibly useful and it's stuff that you're gonna see all over the place. And to be honest, some of the syntax with those are a little tricky, especially when you see them the first time, especially when combining them with arrow functions and the abbreviated arrow function syntax. If you've never seen an arrow function, if you don't know what an arrow function is, array methods are a good way to get introduced to, because people often use them, what these arrow functions are. So array methods are used all over the place. I use them all over the place in my code. That's why I thought it was worth putting that tutorial, that playlist together to show how these different methods work. So array methods are incredibly popular. You will use them a lot. You'll also see them used a lot. So again, a lot of my perspective is trying to get you prepared for what you're going to see and, and thinking about how you can write code in a way that other people are going to be used to as well because you can do some, some unique stuff and if no one else understands how to do it or if people do stuff that you don't understand how to do, that's not very good. So in this case, these five things are gonna help you, one, become a better JavaScript developer, two, understand other people's JavaScript better, three, write better JavaScript yourself that other people are going to be uh, really just kind of used to and prepared to handle. So my top five things, equality, async JavaScript, error handling, ES6 syntax, and array methods. I am tinkering with the idea of doing like a hands-on hour to hour and a half JavaScript crash course on YouTube to talk about all or a lot of these different things. If you'd be interested in seeing uh, that crash course, let me know in the comments below. And uh, if you feel like there's any big topic in JavaScript that I missed in this video, let me know that as well in the comments. Thanks for checking it out and I'll catch you next time.